Does anybody here follow us on the social media? Could you raise your hand? All right. Well, welcome. Thank you all. Appreciate that. Uh, I think we're right around a million followers now. And we have a robust... Um, I think we started getting a lot more followers when I was posting live missions from Iraq. That, that'll get views. I remember one time I was standing up on a hill, actually had a signal through our deal. I'd go, I'll try this live thing. And it got live. And I'm like, hey, everybody, I'm in Iraq. And I start talking, thanks for praying. We're trying to get over to this village where ISIS got some people. And we're trying to get some women and children. All of a sudden, somebody's like, ah, they're yelling. I'm like, oh, there's a ton of ISIS people coming. I was like, I, I got to go. <laughs> it's, it's not looking good. Um, but God's, God's been with us. Our ministry is unique. It's called All Things Possible. And in essence, we set people free. If I had to say one phrase, I'd just say we set people free. Physically, there are times we have to do it. Emotionally, really a lot. And then spiritually, the most important. Spiritually, the most important. And that's, I think we got uh, best known for recovering and rescuing women and children from ISIS um, over the last eight years. Uh, and that's why, hence, we have a home there. It's a safe house. We've had multiples. But to date, between Iraq and Syria, we've helped with trauma relief are helping facilitate things over 45,000 women and children so far out uh, there and still doing the work. Uh, one year we actually took our children. One summer, how's that? They were 11 and 12 at the time, our youngest. And uh, we said, hey, so no Camp Kickapoo this year, but Camp Iraq. And we took them. There was, there was one point we were inside of a camp trying to minister and do some stuff to some, you know, folks. And my son comes over and goes, hey, Dad, there's a group of kids around the corner. They keep telling me to come around the corner because one of them wants to fight me. He's 11. He goes, what do I do? I go, well, don't go around that corner. That's what we learned in big boy school. And... Uh, if one of them touches you, pound the fire out of him. Just grab and just casually stir that dude. Don't stop until he's very compliant. <laughs> and a uh, little while later, he came back with the guy and other kids. It's like his best friend. I told him, I said, you got to earn respect in this culture. These kids, all they know is tough life. It ain't their fault. Kids are the ones that always pay the biggest price for the stupidity of adults. Say amen, somebody over here. The kids are the one. Now, those kids who are raised in decent families are those trying, and you get all sideways. That's just on you for being stupid. Own your stupidity. And the uh, Bible's very clear. You ought to obey your parents. Unless they're trafficking you or something, and then just come tell Uncle Vic, and we'll, we'll make things happen. Um, but best advice I can give teenagers before we turn to some scripture, which I'm going to do an audible for the back team. I don't expect y'all to look this up, but I'm probably going to go to Matthew 19, chapter 26, Matthew 19, 26. But here's my advice to teenagers. Uh, here we go. Best advice I give. Run away. No. <laughs> Not these days, you can't get rid of them. They keep coming back. It's like, go. Like, bing, bing, I'm back. I'll do my chores, let me in. The best advice I can give you is trust your parent or caregiver, grandma and grandma, whoever's provided for you and trust them when you disagree with them the most. I didn't say agree with them. You're not going to hear that coming out of my mouth. Teenagers, you ain't there yet. From a little bit and fully developed. You don't have to agree with them, but trust them. Y'all hear me back there? I'm sensing some action, some live stuff right there. Hey, 
future leaders tend to get a little wild in the upbringing. Say amen, somebody. I was one. I told my mom, do you ever think I'd be rescuing women and children from ISIS while they're shooting at me? She's like, yeah. <laughs> that was kind of fast, mom. Huh. She's like, yeah. The run-ins you had with the law was a beginning. I was like, well. Even when I tried to go into ministry as a pastor, I wasn't quite in the middle of my calling yet. Can't, when they asked me to counsel a dude who had cheated on his wife, one thing led to another, and you know, he ended up cheating on her three times. And every time I got them back together, because I was a young Christian, but I was just out the Marine Corps, so I was like, well, the Bible says forgive, and I told the wife, you do what you want, but the third time when I got a call was from her. She said, he's high on meth or crack, he, he just hit our toddler, bounced her off a wall. She said, what do I do? I said, well, call the police right now in the ambulance. That, that's what you do. She said, I'm just giving you a heads up if he comes to the church. He ended up coming to the church. Hi, just tweaking. Wah. And he sees me, and then he went to find another pastor. <laughs> so I ninja him over there. said, hey, want to counsel he said, oh, it's a horrible day. I said, come on back to the office. Long story short, when it came time for wise words of wisdom, you know, he says, you know, I don't know. He's making all excuses. It's horrible when men don't take responsibility for their stuff. Just take responsibility when you blow it. He didn't. And as a matter of fact, he's like, oh, I don't know. You know, I said, yeah, your wife called me. I said, man, I, I have a lot of grace for everything but you don't hurt women or children. You bounced your toddler off a wall, it's giving her some type of concussion, put a hole in the wall with her. I said, he goes, I don't know what's wrong with me. And he starts crying, I don't know what's wrong with me. Uh, and then he said these words, maybe I should get hit. I was like, I'm not good at a lot of things, but conflict I am. So I did. <laughs> uh, well, apparently the other pastoral leader, he didn't find it amusing as I have a guy pinned in the floor of my deal laying hands on him. It was, it was scripture, scriptural, I'm scriptural. And like, you know, he gets the door open. He's like, Victor, Victor. And I'm like this. I'm, I'm counseling. What are you? <laughs> do people interrupt you? He said, come here. So he recognized my strong back and weak mind. He's like, Victor and the guy said, call the police. I'm like, shut up. They are being called on you. It's like, yes. He goes, Victor, when people come in for counseling, we, we don't hit them. And I was like, you know, I was like, oh, no, no, no. I, I understand that. I said, well. I got it all, we got it, we, we're okay legally. He's like, what? He goes, he said he should be hit, like or beaten, so it's like a weaver, we can beat him. <laughs> He's like, you, you're not good at this, sorry. <laughs> so that's when they asked me as a church to extend my giftedness in other places. <laughs> that's, how I, that's another way of saying I got fired. So look, on your journey of following the Lord, sometimes things just aren't going to work out. That's okay. Our goal should be to seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. That's the, your ultimate goal. That should be everything you want it to be about. Just seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Everything else, everything else will take care of itself. But the Christian life's not supposed to be easy. Do you all agree? I don't know who started coming up with that philosophy. You read the words of Jesus, it can get down right to, well, you die. Is that in there or am I making this up? Yeah. That's exciting enough for me. It's exciting enough for enough young people who join the military. Anybody join the military for hopes of traveling places and shooting bad people in the face? 
Is that too much? Is that, I'm just, sorry. I, didn't, I mean, other people, not me. Ugh. Violence. Ugh. But um, I, I, let's just address passive Christianity. Christians who develop a philosophy that uh, the Lord God Almighty is only love without justice. Love without conviction. Love without consequence. Look at me. I just spoke at my brother's funeral. My best friend outside of my wife. And he wasn't supposed to die. Happened like that. We come from the same background. And he, he, done, real, he done real good in life. Started climbing all rigs as an 18-year-old. The roughneck. Didn't have a dad like me. So he read books. And his, he says his dad was Louis Lamar, a famous Western novelist, an author who wrote books. My brother read all of them. My brother, he was the brother that got me out of stuff I got into. <laughs> He'd say, whoa. Oh. Because he was a few years older. He's like, Yo, all I get in mouth is overloading you mosquito bee, hon. And he had to come clobber people for me when it was too many. He was always like that. Uh, at one point, he's, he developed his own directional drilling company. I think it was valued at one point at $150 million. So when he'd call me complaining about pressure, I would say, brother... Can you still go buy a trailer, pay cash for it, and live free? He's like, I think I can get a double wide. I said, don't show off. He goes, you're right, what I got to be worried about. We celebrated his 60th birthday. Just about a year ago. And he, he was looking at spending his time in Costa Rica where they have so much land, living on his 300-acre three three ranch in Texas, enjoying all the cars he had collected, including an original Shelby, Fastback, which I told him he should have donated that to the ministry. It's the Lord... I tried to steal it from him last time I was there. He took the battery out. He knew I was going to go for it. But I just had to preach at his funeral just a couple of weeks ago. It was about 500 people showed up. I thought to myself, what really matters? What would my brother want y'all to hear today? I told this sordid group of people. From all well executives to rubbish dudes, who my brother treated the same. My brother treated trash collectors and CEOs the same. Well, no difference to him. He didn't look at skin color or bank accounts. He looked at the character of a man. So if you try to bring that racism stuff for him, he'd knock you into the morals and shut your mouth. You don't know nothing about me. I judge a man by his character. The same with titles of Christianity or faith. No matter what you say, it's what you do. A lot of weirdos go to church. That was, you could hear the pastors laughing. <laughs> and all of us are in the sanctification process. But The most important thing in life is eternal life. I'm going to say that one more time like it actually meant something. The most important thing in life is eternal life. We all die. We all, no matter short or long, are checking out. This This is just a little test ground 
find out what you're going to believe and how you're going to live. And that's why I want to look at that scripture in Matthew 19. Oh, look at y'all. Wow, that's impressive. Jesus looked at them. He's talking to his disciples and he said, with men, this is impossible. With God, all things are possible. What's he talking about? You go to verse 16. It says, behold, a rich young man came to Jesus, right? And he's like, uh, hey, good teacher. How do you have eternal life? What must I do to have eternal life? He asked the right question. The problem is the way Jesus answered. He said, first of all, why do you call me good? No one is good but one. And then he says, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. Like, if you want to keep the commandments. We forget about the commandments these days. People try to get them taken out. No one want to hear the law of God, the commandments of if you want to have a better society, you ought to obey these. You want to have a better family life, obey these. Hey, you want to have a better teenage life, just obey these. Honor your father and your mother. Don't lie. Don't covet your neighbor's stuff. Don't cheat. If you're married, don't cheat. If you're single, don't be sleeping around. Those are the, these are just a few of the basics, the big ten. We act like those, those are some evil words today. Nobody preaches on this. I hear a lot of churches saying, well, you know, Old Testament, that's the Old Covenant, we ain't got to look at that anymore. But yet Jesus referenced it. He fulfilled the law. He didn't do away with it. He can distill it down with you know, love your neighbor as yourself. In our society, we don't have a problem with love. We have a problem with identity. People don't know who they are. Is that the truth? When you're choosing to be binary or a lot of the other terms, when you're saying, address me as he, them, thou, they, thee, she, buttercup, there's, there's a problem in the house. And granted, some young people do it just because it's part of the deal. But when people start removing body parts, when mutilation starts to happen, when doctors are giving kids hormone blockers as children because they feel a certain way, that's dangerous. I know you're sitting here, you're pissed off at me already. You're watching, you're going, ooh, ooh. Go back to the funny stuff. Well, I love you enough to tell you the truth. You can disagree with me, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Don't try to come at me in the lobby mad and take a swing because I'm the type of visiting preacher that swings back. And, <laughs> and ch <laughs> chances are the number of years I've been in martial arts, rolling with Hoist Gracie in the 80s before UFC, to own and operate martial arts schools where knuckle draggers, uh, chances are I'm going to be a little bit more lucky than you just by years of doing it. Man, we got we to gotta get back to a culture that speaks the truth. That says, I know how you feel, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Somebody dared call me homophobic one. I was like, you don't even know me. Yeah, it, it, just because you say it doesn't mean it's true, champ. Let me tell you who I am. I just had four people on my podcast interviewed separately that, that are all committed gay people. Don't, don't, you don't even know. One person's, <laughs> Matt, he's, uh, I interviewed him. He, he sits down and he goes, I, I'm, he says, I've been following you for years, man. Love you. I was like, oh, thanks. What kind of, when you say love, I mean, is that like a, he was like, Victor, shut up. I was like, okay, just making sure. <laughs> Let me set this up. You ain't looking at nothing back here, are you? He's like, what is, 
He goes, I'm a trans man. I said, trans man? Help me understand. He goes, I was born a girl, but super high ester- uh, test levels all my life. I was born where I, my parents could raise me either way. At 26, I decided to transition into a man. And he, he's, he's a man. You know, I was like, whoa. One of the super rare, rare cases. Intersex could have gone either way. I'm like, you get a pass right there. And, you know, I'm interviewing him and but every once in a while he says, I love what you do. And he has these really piercing blue eyes. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Don't look at me at them blue. I see the woman in you for 26 years. Our relationship is always been in love with people, even people who don't agree with us. Do you understand? Uh, and especially with believers. It's supposed to be love. We speak the hard things and the truth, but it's still love. That's my motivation. What do I have to, what do I have to gain to pick people off? Nothing. Believe me, I was offered a seven-figure job a few years back. I, I could have done away with all this, being shot at, threats, rescuing, recovering, the warfare, all, all of that could have gone away. We could have ended our senior citizen life better. Are we senior citizens? No? Why, why didn't they always get those ads for that stuff? How do they know? But back to identity, we have an identity crisis in our nation. And it's starting with the young people, not the old ones. The older people, can I just exhort the older evangelical people? Some of you are the worst hypocrites on the face of this earth. And it's caused a lot of problems for the younger generation. They've left in droves because of your hypocrisy. And they have a right to be ticked off. I'll just tell you right now. Uh, you know how many weird people, naming the name of Christ, have molested kids in the evangelical church? The numbers is going, trust me, I believe it, high as the Catholic church. The Catholic church is organized and has money. Like the introductory said, I hunt predators. My teams right now are hunting right now. I have teams going all around the United States. We do it from analysts to actually engaging we work at law enforcement. We recently did a sting with Homeland Security. We hunt bad people overseas, anywhere. People talk about the border and issues. Huh. We went to the border. We're taking in women and children coming across the river. And you look into girls' eyes that took three months to get from where they were to here, and you could see the pain and the molestation and the rape they endured just to get to America, they're coming here for a reason. First of all, let's just say that. The, the majority of them are coming here for a reason. They want better because we have a great country we live in. That's why they're willing to risk everything to get here. So don't blame people trying to get here and bring their families for a real reason. Then we went from the top of Mexico to the bottom. Then we snuck in from Mexico to Guatemala by coyotes. How's that? We're freaking everybody out. White people, we mess them all up. They're like, this is not the right way. Take the money, brother. Get me across the river. Let's do this. Then we went to Panama, and then we went up the, to the Darien Gap, the, the most dangerous place on the face of the earth, a stretch where more people have died or killed to go through that. Then we went all the way down to Colombia and help get a girl uh, off the seat who's being trafficked. Listen to me, I get it, I get it. But we are who we have to work with. And I believe in borders. Believe me, when I was in Iraq, the Iraqis were asking me, what is wrong with y'all? Seal your borders, have a process for people to come in. I said, we're supposed to. They go, do you want it to turn into Iraq where ISIS is everywhere? I go, no. So there's a lot of intentionality. Our country has a crisis in identity. If we lose the patriotic feel for who we are as a nation, we are in trouble. When, when the rhetoric is people saying, I hate this country, if certain things happen, I'll leave it. I'm like, well, leave now, go. 
We need people who are willing to fight for our nation, like some of us stood in the gap to do. We need people to understand how, and look at this country. Look where y'all live, this is incredible. I'm gonna talk more about that tonight, along with my story of why I'm so motivated about all this. But I'll tell you, as hearts for people on this earth, the most important thing is we worry about eternity. You gotta, you gotta work it out here. But young people, don't succumb to the messaging and the language of this world. Uh, and, and trust me, I know people in the music industry and actors and all that. Most people who are putting out certain aspects of music that, that is filthy, gangster, blah, blah, they're not living that lifestyle. They ain't letting their kids live it, but they're sure letting you live it because you buying it. It's about money. You guys, the Bible says that the God of this world is Satan, evil. And I'm gonna talk about that tonight. Very real evil. That's why it's so messed up. That's why our kids are struggling with their identity. That's far beyond, I mean, why are they going after our children? Why? The enemy's plan. Distort a young person's mind of sexuality, the suicide rates go up. Break the family unit, boom. Now the rates go for that boy to be troubled, use drugs, get involved with the police, bad side, go to jail, incarceration, and then you got another generation of kids. Do you understand? We're at such a critical point, and I'll just say this, men, to the men, you full grown men, it's time to take a stand. Women, of, women are leading the charge in so much of this, but it's time for the men to lead. It's time for the men to take a stand. Starting in your own home. You don't know how many men I've talked to said, my wife runs the home, man, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, well, lead. They're like, yeah, try. I'm like, oh, you think I'm married to Daisy? Think I'm married to little Lily? Woman's a black belt, trained in multiple platforms. Been on missions with me to Iraq, led missions with me into Syria, the ISIS camps. ISIS camps. We know what it's like to be shot at, mortared. We've taken our children into Iraq, had to hide because ISIS was looking for us for three days. Don't, don't you for a second think my wife's just a little lily. She is a strong, dangerous lady, a woman. And we know the definition of it. We've been separated twice. She was wrong both times. She figured that out. Get on you. We have five children. We've celebrated 34 years of marriage. We never gave up on each other, and we never cheated on each other. That's what real men do. You hang tough. You fight for what's right. Even when your kids are going sideways. I remember telling my oldest kid one time, she was just all about it. Just... Man, one, one point I was like, you should smoke dope. Honestly, you should just get loaded. Well, you're so dang mean. When are they going to pass the law? And uh, but, uh, I actually told her that. I didn't mean it, but I was like, dang, girl, you are just like your mama. And, uh, but I said this. <laughs> I ain't never getting invited back. Well, I'll just go for it anyway. I preach like I'm never coming back anyway. But I, here's the deal. I told my daughter, I said, look, I've never had a, was she 16 at the time or something, 15? I was like, I've never had a teenager before. I don't know how to do this. And it kind of stopped our fighting. It was, she was like, what? You're the parent. I go, I never had a teenager. You're, you're crazy. I don't, I, I don't know how to do this. I said, now I have been one, and I was a hellion, so I know how to make it through. Will you trust me? I've been through the minefield. Let me get you through this. And I do believe there's a real devil trying to destroy your life. Let me get you through the minefield. And then when you're an adult, you can do it all. You know, she's married now and got two daughters. I prayed for daughters for her. And she got two of them. God bless her. 
going to reap what you... So, <laughs> Jesus is great. <laughs> but guys, we got to stand. We got to lead. Ladies, let your man lead and cheerlead him on to do it. Not the nagging stuff. Women, does it work? You might be able to get them, move them a little bit. It's like pushing a string. You, you're laughing kind of hard on that one. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Some of us men just become strings. Like, you can nag all you want. Ugh. You know the greatest thing my wife says to me? Well, first, she, she makes me feel like I can cross oceans and fight dragons and rescue kids. And I do. It's because of her. She's never made me doubt it. At times when I doubted myself, she's like, you were made for this. You go get it. I'm like, hell yeah, I will, girl. Let's, I'll go show them. I have gone into gunfights hearing my wife's voice when I said, what, you know, what if you, you ready to be a widow for the gospel? Because I have to go and cut. And my wife told me this, true words. She said, I'd rather be a widow than married to a coward. Now go get it. I'm like, you bet I will. I'll be right back with a kid. What happened to wives like that? You get so much more when you, when you even if he ain't, make him believe he is. He may move a little bit toward that direction. And you know the best way my wife has ever exhorted me? Outside of that throat punch that one time where I was like, Ugh. <laughs> when I messed up, is she goes, she just says, she just says this little phrase, and man, it gets me. No nagging, no pointing out my wrong, no trying to finger right. That's all she says. Leave me better than that, honey. Lead me better than that. I'm like, dang. I will. I'm sorry. Watch me. Wives, raise your hand if you're going to try that. Raise your hands if you're going to try it. I'm looking for some commitment here. And men, if they exhort you in that loving way, apologize. Go, you're right. You deserve to be led better. Ooh, hard truth, Rabbi, this morning. But I love you enough to tell you the truth, every one of you. 16 times Iraq and Syria in the last eight years. That's all my time in the Middle East in my 50s. Not my 20s, young men. I was in Burma in my 40s. Older people, stop thinking like you're old. You're not. You're older, but you got wisdom. And the younger generation needs it. But live a life that's worthy of them at least trying to look at you and go, what do you think? I'm glad you asked. I'd be happy. We've been through the minefield. Does that make sense? Older people. Mm. Man. With God, all things are possible. With men, it's not. My story is a dramatic one that was turned into a film and a book. And I welcome you all to watch it. It's on YouTube in 15 languages now. But I was abused as a kid and I was tortured and left for dead in a commercial cooler. I had 123 visits to a trauma specialist. I've been on Depakote, Depakine, Prozac, Zoloft, Lithium, Buspar, I did drugs starting in the sixth grade. I know it's like to be addicted. I know it's like to kill a man. I know it's like to put a pistol in my mouth and wanna make my pain go away. I know it's like to hear the hordes of demons from hell screaming at me saying, make everybody's life better. Injures. I know it's like to feel despair and hatred where it consumes you. I know what it's like to do good and then be overcome with evil. 
because of my hatred of what I've seen happen to kids. I know what it's like to look a man in the face and know I can kill him right now. No one would either know, and certainly no one would blame me because of what he's done. And the Lord says, stay your hand. You don't do anything without my permission. I never should have made it. By all statistics, I shouldn't be standing here before you. I am one that God has shown off in. I am one that proves God's word is true, that with him nothing is possible. Stop limiting yourself because what you think God is able to do or not able to. Stop limiting yourself because of your past or your family or your challenges or things you've blown it. Stop. Today, God can renew your mind, set your feet on a new path to do and be who he created you to be. I'm tired of people believing lies. Satan is the father of lies. He's not the father of evil. His goal is to lie to you until you believe it. And then he'll let you be because now you're just moving in, in your truth of his lies. It's a lie. It's a lie. The truth is God's word, that you're more than an overcomer that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. That greater is he that's in you than he that's in this whole world. That Jesus, lo God loved this world so much that he sent his only begotten son to die for us, us, we sinners. You don't have to worry about trying to figure out your identity. He, she, them, they, thou, become his. Find your identity in Christ. You don't have to be a knucker, dragger, tough guy that's gone from tough to hard, and that's my warning to men. Be careful on your pathway to become tough. You don't become hard be the, because of the crap of this world. Let God keep your heart soft because without that capacity to love, you won't be able to love. Your wife needs it. Your children need it. Don't worry, God will flip that switch when you gotta be that warrior. But we need men to stand. And we need people just these days to say, that's wrong. Why would you say that? We need people to go to drag queen shows where children are present and go, hey, you need to put something on, dude. You wanna go do that with some adults? Go, not with kids. Parents, don't bring your kids to this. This is crazy. This is crazy. They're after our children because it's the enemy. It's all based on lies. I went to a house that I was abused at 30 years afterwards. I'll tell the story tonight more in detail, but that man who abused me went to prison. But I remember knocking on that door because God told me to. I was scared to death full grown man. And I thought, wow. I knocked on the door and the elderly lady opened it. She said, may I help you? I said, ma'am, I know this seems odd. I said, but I used to live here and I felt like God told me to come here. She said, what's your name? I told her, she said, mm, what's your old stepdaddy's name? I told her, she said, I bought this house from him. Then she said this without me saying anything. She goes, bad things happened here, didn't it? Yes, ma'am. She said, come in. And I did. And this is what changed one of my views of God forever. A woman who I'd never met, who lived in that house about 30 years. And I would have burnt that house down, but she said, I want to show you something, young man. She went in the back room, brought out a picture, laid it down. She said, we knew y'all had to run out of this house one night. We heard the stories and we sold y'all's furniture and all that and gave stuff to Goodwill. She said, but 
I kept this picture. It was me and my siblings. One of those old Sears pictures or something. And she said, I prayed for you all these years. I prayed for you. I said, that's me right there, that blonde one, the real handsome one. <laughs> Certainly high IQ, but you can tell. This elderly woman prayed for me and my siblings, never met me. God kept her alive long enough for me to tell her, well done, well done, good and faithful servant. I became a Christian. I have a family. I'm actually an assistant to Dr. James Dobson at Focus on the Family. Now family talk. I said, should have died many a times. Thank you for your prayers because it kept me alive. And I'm doing God's will for my life. Older folks, you ain't old. You just older. And I told my wife, if I'm hooked up to a machine, don't unplug me. I might be praying in some coma or something. <laughs> Let me go. Even if you have to bring me around for years. It'll be a deterrent for you marrying again. <laughs> this is my husband. He ain't going nowhere. He said he's praying. Just feed me gumbo through a tube. Man, can you imagine? Last thing. Let's just all be the thumbprint, the fingerprint God made us to be. Our identity in him, we can't do better. Don't try to be anybody else, just be you. Flaws and alls. Does that make sense? If you got same sex attraction, deal with it. I got opposite sex attraction and I overcame it. Let that set in for a minute. I addressed a big old community one time with people with same sex attraction. It's like, I get y'all. because I have opposite sex attraction. They're like, I don't know if that's the same, Victor. Like, yeah, it's my human nature. I consecrated to God. That's how I'm able to be faithful to my wife. That and I like living. Let's be free. Let's be light for the Lord in all that we do. Well, I invite y'all back tonight I'll share more of my story. Anybody want to hear more of it? How, how God can unscramble eggs? He sure can. If today you like what we do and are interested in more, or as always, when I get the opportunity to speak, I ask for support. We're not broke, but we love people to support us and pray for us. In the lobby, we have a little table set up, a real fancy blank card, just a blank card and a pen. This is how we do it, old school. You just write your name and contact information, phone number or email or whatever, and we'll get a hold of you and start taking your money. It's that easy. We're, if we can hunt predators, we, we, we can get a little something from you. Even while we speak, even while we speak, bad guys have been caught. I just got a text because we're hunting bad people right now. And there were two arrests made in California on a sting operation. We identified, I think it was 25 bad guys or 23, yeah, victims. And then we got the bad guys. You guys pray for us. It, it, it's just facing the manifestation of evil is what we do. Setting people free physically, emotionally, and spiritually. I love you all and I appreciate the time today.